case, I'm going to talk about how you would create an illustration of a layered food item. I found an illustration or a photograph I want to use right here. I'm going to hold down Control and uh, copy the image so that I can paste that into Illustrator. I have uh, a new document ready to go. Don't forget the actual title needs to be your last name, your first initial, followed by layered food. ahead and paste the image inside of here. Remember to hold down shift to create it and fit it to your page. If it's larger, shrink it down. We're working with the layers, so I need to double click and on the first layer right here and title it original photo. And then I need to, from the menu, choose template, locks it in place, and then I can start working over the top. <clears throat> so I create a new layer. I can then start looking at my photograph and decide which uh, item I want to create first. Every layer is going to be a different layer of food. So I would start with the bread, then create lettuce, then work on the meat, then the cheese, then tomato, the lettuce, and then finally the bread again. So I would start by titling first layer right there. The most important part is that even though I do not see this slice of bread, I actually create an overlap, one object over the top of the other. So in fact I would probably start and actually come down and try and figure out where it would actually go and try and get an accurate representation of the shape, even for areas that I don't actually see. So I know that it would continue up across, and then round, and back to the beginning. Now as far as uh, color goes inside of these illustrations, uh, I want to need to be using the swatch palette. Yeah. You can collect colors from your, swatch, from your photograph using the eyedropper tool, located on the left toolbox. This works by, by clicking on the actual photograph and sampling a color. If you double click on the eyedropper tool, you get options and you can actually make the sample size a little larger so that you get an average color. A crust of the bread. And you can see that that kind of comes in both on the object that got selected and on the fill color. I'm then going to save this into my swatch palette. I'm going to start by creating a color group, I'm titling that group, and it appears right there. Let's go sample some more colors. I'm going to pick up the lettuce, and then I can actually pick this color up and place it directly on top of the fold. I can grab another color, add tomato, and that color, the top of the bread, add that color. And I can pick up various other ones to create darker colors as I'm going to actually create shading and highlights. There's a lighter green, a bit of lighter red, I can place that right next to it, maybe a dark brown. You can see I have a nice selection of different colors I can actually use. Let's get some for the meat. So I've got a nice wide range of colors I can actually use. So that is my swatch palette and I have that grouped, saved with all the colors I need. I'm going to go ahead and position it back where I wanted it and I'll come back to that in a few minutes. I can lock that and I can turn it off and then I can pay attention to actually creating the next piece by creating a new layer. I'm going to title this Lettuce. Can work on that group object. So again, I'm going to come out and I can try and just trace this as close as I possibly can. Don't forget that it needs to be a closed path, so I need to come all the way around and actually close it off. So I'm going to make my way all the way around and I can add more detail to this later as far as turns and leaves and 
shapes that I want to actually add color to, but I can start by actually getting a very basic kind of shape. All the way around on this lower piece of lettuce. And I'm going to bring this all the way up and actually connect up that spot right there. <clears throat> now I can then go use a color to actually create that piece right there. Again, if I bring that piece in, you can see that I have the bread and now the lettuce form. So if I turn both of those off, I can keep working. I can now go create the sliced meat. And then I can actually zoom in and go and create this piece too. So as you can see, I'm working my way around. And here I can probably come over and close that off. And then I need to get that right color, so I think that would work. Now inside the layer, I can actually turn off that object, just hide it, so then I can work on the next piece. And this looks like it's actually a fold of the same piece folded over twice. So I can go create this one. And this one's obviously sitting on top. And I want to just give it the appearance as though it's actually just sitting right there on top of it. And then I've got that piece created too. Now if I actually put back the original one, now they just look two of the same. So I probably want to choose a slightly different color. lighten it up. So the other option we can actually work with is Color Guide. And Color Guide provides tints and shades of that same color. So there's the color I'm currently at. I could go with one shade lighter. Now what I also want to start paying attention to is actually adding stroke color to my outline to give it some more uh, shape and actual detail. So I can now go and add a darker color to my stroke outline to give it a sense as if it actually has an edge to it. And I can even go darken that a little bit so you can actually see the edge. Now I can go do the same on that one. And I want to apply the same kind of thickness stroke to it. So I've got a four point stroke with a darker outline on it. Now if I'm adding outlines here, I need to go back to my layers and add outlines to everything else. So I would add an outline to my lettuce. And that way I can go back to my color guide and find a darker color for the outline. And apply an outline of four again to that. So you can kind of see that's now applied that. Darker outline around my lettuce. And I would do the same on the bread. Like that. There's my colors that I want to use. I come back to my outline stroke and choose a darker color. So you can kind of see I'm building up as I go one layer over the top of the next. And then I can hide my picture to see where I'm at. Keep going with this and actually adding various different objects with color and outline stroke. Also, you can then start to build using your swatch palette various different gradients to actually give this more shape, more dimension, more detail. So let's go create a gradient inside of here. With the swatches actually saved, the swatches now show up in my gradient box. So there's the first color. There's the second color. And I might want to actually make a darker version of that color. And I can always come over and actually darken this. So I should give it a slightly darker color like that. With the lettuce, I can also, if I go back, I can lock the other layers and I can turn them off. So I can concentrate completely on the actual lettuce itself. I can work over the top and actually create different pieces. And I can either create it in the lighter object and take off the outline. Or I could go create a darker object. That's back on my color guide. I can go and actually create a darker color right there. And that's the same color as my outline. If I wanted to, I could actually go and follow the photograph a little better. 
open up my layer and turn off the base piece. So I'm left with this, and then I can actually follow where I would actually see darker pieces. So I could go create a piece in here. And create that in the darker. Same right here. And I could even add gradients to this to actually give it more detail. The darker piece right here. And that will give my lettuce a little bit more shape than looking just completely flat. Remember I have to tuck that in underneath so it doesn't actually look as though I've got an empty gap. Another piece right here. And close that off too. So I can actually go back, turn those on. And turn that original lettuce piece too. So you can see I'm actually getting more shape to my lettuce as I do that. Don't forget to save your work as you go along and actually preserve it on your documents so you don't lose anything. The last part that I want to talk about is the brush tool where you can actually go now start adding a textured outline to your shapes. It doesn't have to always be the same texture but you can see if I put that on here I actually have a slightly rougher texture going along the path. I could do the same for the bread. And it actually provides an uneven textured stroke to it. There's various other ones you can choose from the library menu right here, such as artistic, artistic charcoal. You can see there's various different effects that get various different surfaces that look a little bit uh, more interesting, just a plain, consistent thickness. And that's it, so make sure you just keep adding layers, renaming those layers, and building them until you finish the illustration.